The Suzhou River, ever present, ever flowing, ambivalent to what occurs around it, but consistently influential when in frame. A pair of lips, painted a striking pink by a forbidden lipstick. All of these scenes are unquestionably artistic. Although they may differ when considering their respective framing, focus, and context, they all share a common quality. More specifically, they all contain traces of a certain otherness that enhances what viewers see. This enhancement comes from the cinematic concept of photogenie. According to film theorist Louis Deluc, photogenie is what allows film to transform itself from its original conception as a scientific recording device to a unique visual art form. This concept has been analyzed by numerous theorists. Impressionist film theorist John Epstein described photogenie as any aspect of things, beings, or souls whose moral character is enhanced by filmic reproduction. While film theorist David Bordwell explained that the concept of photogenie grows out of an attempt to account for the mysteriously alienating quality of cinema's relation to reality. However, photogenie has been criticized by many film theorists due to its loose conceptual nature and seemingly inconsistent definition, and many claim it to be an impenetrable, quasi-supernatural enigma that is theoretically incoherent. So what is it about photogenie that causes it to be so elusive and difficult to define as a film concept? My first point of argument concerns a particularly difficult aspect of photogenie. Photogenie's partly subjective nature causes definitions of it to be inconsistent. This subjectivity stems from photogenie's primary concern of perceiving a certain otherness when viewing film. The problem arises when one realizes that this feeling of otherness can vary from viewer to viewer. An excellent example of this can be found in the comparison of the two films I showed before, Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger's Black Narcissus and Lu Ye's Suzhou River. First, let's begin with a scene from Suzhou River. The light bulb in the shot is the primary focus of this scene. While the woman character is wandering around and putting on clothes, the light bulb never leaves its position at the center of the shot. Through the process of animism, which gives this inanimate object character and its own personality, we learn much about the lives of our characters. They live crude, impoverished lives, and the bulb is indicative and reflective of their social standing. This is a great example of photogenie. And then there's this scene from Black Narcissus. While this scene may appear similar to the one from Suja River, further analysis highlights its differences. There is an object at the center of the shot in this scene, the bell, but it doesn't play the same role. The shot also contains far more information, like the nun that walks by, the doorway she walks through, and the mountains in the distance. The camera is placed far further away, and the bell is by no means the focus of the shot. This scene also contains photogenie. Some disagree. Some may feel that they felt nothing when viewing these scenes, and believe that claiming them to be photogenic is short-sighted. And yet, who is to say? Epstein himself stated, for in the end, it all comes down to a question of perspective, a question of design. Where other theories are more concrete, photogenic subjective nature makes it difficult to pin down what's right and wrong, which leads us into my next argument regarding photogenic elusivity. Photogenic is a broad theory in every sense of the word. It concerns itself with the souls of objects that are revealed through filmic reproduction. Given proper context and explanation, it seems that almost anything could be photogenic. It's broad. Given proper reason, it's an all-inclusive concept. This doesn't help make it any more understandable. How do you explain the nuances of a theory if these nuances vary from film to film, from theorist to theorist? So why do theorists put up with it? Why do we still give such an abstract, enigma-like concept's credence? Photogeny is ancient, and was produced at a time where film scholarship is scarce. It's appropriate, expected even, for theories in all areas of study to live short lives, as more is discovered and learned about the topic. And yet photogeny, for all its flaws, still holds bits of absolute truth. Even if one disregards photogenie as an incoherent, abstract mess, you still must admit the power it holds. For that feeling of otherness, that permeating effect that filmed objects have on those who view them, no other theory explains this phenomenon better than photogenie. And even though it's hard to grasp, you cannot deny its presence, even 100 years later. That is why we need photogenie.